Let me greet Commissar Ndlozi and the uh, former national chairperson of the EFF, Advocate Alimpofu, and all the ground force of the EFF and the community members of uh, La Nation. We are in this place not because it was an accident for us to be here. We are here because we share a common history as black people of South Africa. We know that La Nation was created as a result of forceful removal of Indian people from the city center. And we are confident that the struggle for economic emancipation is a struggle that seeks to reverse the imbalances created by the past. We know that when they established this place, there was no infrastructure that you see today. But because of the hard work of the people of Lanesia, we were able to achieve what we have achieved out of our own hard work. This place also played a role in the struggle against apartheid because here came one organization called Lanesia Youth League in 1982, which was resisting and opposing apartheid. Our history is so common such that we can't look at each other as if we are of different races. We are one race, and that race is called humanity. We are one race because that race is black. So when we say we want to liberate black people economically, we mean Indians, Africans, and Colors. Because those were the most oppressed nations of our country. And you cannot talk liberation of the oppressed yet preaching division of our people. We are the only organization that is hated for calling for unity of Africans. So we can't say let's unite with Africans. But we can't unite with ourselves as Africans and Indians who are sharing the territory. So we love Winnie Mandela so much, so much that our councillors went to a council to go and sponsor a motion that Gandhi Square must be changed to Winnie Mandela. And when that came to the attention of the leadership of the EFF, we told them that it is not going to happen because Gandhi also fought a good struggle in this country. And therefore, to put Winnie Mandela against the name of Gandhi is actually creating unnecessary divisions amongst ourselves. There are a lot of apartheid statues and places that we can name after Winnie Mandela. But we think where our office, our national office is, Gandhi Square, it's a rightful place and it is called with the right name. The EFF wants to protect all our people and wants peace and stability in our country. We are one organization that if we are given a responsibility, it will not take us three months to reduce crime close to nothing. Because we will not be the kind of government that will smile with criminals. Will not be the kind of government that will arrest men and women who took out AK-47 against the police who are carrying 9 millimeters. Once you take such a dangerous weapon meant for war against the police, you must know you have made an appointment with your maker. 
because no one must point a dangerous weapon. To say police, if they use force, they are going to end up abusing that power and killing even innocent people is not true. There was a group of police who were doing a good work in KZN, which was called Cattlemen. That group of police got so excited and ended up being involved in fights of gangsters and killing even innocent people. Because of our constitution and the way things are, that group of police was able to be exposed and they were removed from the police force. Because we've got checks and balances in South Africa to ensure that police do not abuse their power. But police feel scared in their own country, in their own communities, because if police are scared, then it's worse with us. It means we are dead. If those who are meant to protect us are scared, it means we are dead people. That's why in the EFF we say there must be a, a satellite police station in each and every ward where there will be police visibility. Let's take El Dorado Park, for instance. When we want to hold a meeting of the EFF at El Dorado Park at 6 o'clock during the week because we're thinking people will still be coming from work, we get told by community members that you can't hold a meeting at El Dorado Park at 6. It's not safe. It's dangerous. Why would a community come to such a conclusion and it becomes normalized that year after six, no one must walk? Why can't we deploy sufficient police, especially after six, because we know after six, abnormal things are happening. The children can't walk to a library. They can't uh, go and study as a group in another family because when it's time to go home it will be late and then girl children will be raped. We cannot have it as normalized that in Lanesia children get kidnapped and people are asking for ransom money for those children to be released and we thought it was children for Miss Andrews. They now even kidnap old people and demand all kinds of money, and which means that the people of Lanesia will live in fear. And we cannot allow a situation where criminals are not scared and law-abiding citizens are scared. It's supposed to be the other way around, where law-abiding citizens are the happiest, and those who break the law they are very scared. But in South Africa, you want to live happily. You must be a member of a gangster or belong to a gangster. And those who don't belong to a gangster, when the darkness starts here in Lanesia, we are all running to our houses. In our own country, criminals have taken over the streets. Hence, the EFF says, we need patrollers. Not just patrollers but patrollers who have resources and they can defend themselves. We want to hire no less than 100,000 officers in less than a year and put those boots on our streets and make sure that our people are looked after. Both here in Lanesia, the formal place, and even in the informal settlement, because under the EFF, there will not be informal settlement. We will formalize it. And if they don't want to formalize, we will forcefully formalize them. Because they can't stay in an area where there is no road. Where a person, Buddha, just comes and put a shack. Where the taxi must go in. Where the ambulance must go in. There will be law 
and order. And when we speak about Lanesia, we speak of everyone, Indians and Africans, both in the formal and informal settlements, will receive the necessary protection. But we will also pay the informants. We need to find a, a, a nice way, because informants remind us of people like Sir Ramaphosa, who were informants of apartheid. So, we need to find, in, in, in Cuba, they call them defenders of the revolution. So, we need to find a nice way of calling these informers because the EFF government is going to give them money. How do you have crime intelligence that pays 300 rand per informer who gave them um, information about a dangerous situation where an Indian businessman has been kidnapped. We know where this man is. These people are demanding 10 million. If you do this, do that, you are going to find them at that place. They do exactly that. They find this person who kidnapped an Indian businessman. They save 10 million from that family and then give an informant 300 rand. And this informant takes a, a high risk by giving such dangerous information to the police. So informants are going to be paid properly so that they put their ears and their eyes on the ground and they know if I deliver a successful information, I'm going to get enough money to support myself and my children. So we need to reclaim the streets by ensuring that Police are there, patrollers are there, and informants are there, and our people become police themselves by not buying stolen goods. Because we make crime to flourish by buying stolen goods. A person comes with a laptop without a charger and sells it to you, or you'll make a plan with the charger. You must know already that there is a problem. Once there is no charger, there is a problem. Hmm? You, you, you buy a TV, it doesn't have that cord of plugging. You know this was stolen. So we must not buy stolen goods. We want to ensure that we stop load shedding. Load shedding is man-made. It's not, it's not God-given. If you want to see that for real, uh, load shedding is man-made, just remember when the World Rugby Cup was played. The whole World Rugby Cup, we had electricity. How does electricity know there is World Rugby Cup? Only human beings know there is a world, there is a game of the bosses who can't take away the electricity. So, immediately after the World Rugby World Cup, load shading hits. Look at what they are doing now. They are trying by all means to keep the lights on until the 29th of May. So, I want to tell you that the electricity is going to go away on the 29th of May, 9 o'clock, when counting starts. Because they want us to count, they want us to count in darkness. So that they can steal the elections the same way they stole elections here in Gauteng. So, it, it is because it's a human being's problem. It's not any other problem. We need to fix coal power stations. And make sure those power stations are used optimally. 
for the benefit of our people. But we need you to convert because we spend a lot of electricity on heating, like on geysers. Why should we have electricity geysers when there is gas geysers? As part of government intervention to save electricity, we will give our people free gas geysers in exchange for your electric geyser so that we save electricity. Why should we have uh, electric stoves in our homes when we can have gas stoves? Imagine you remove heating and you remove cooking from the grid you save a lot of electricity as an immediate intervention. But you need to go to China, you need to go to Russia and ask them to come and help you to conclude Midubi and Kusile, which we have been building for so many years and we don't seem to be getting them right. When one unit is working in Midubi power station, it's a call for celebration. They even issue a statement that one unit is working now. It won't last six months. It collapses. In, in Midubi, you even have infrastructural problems with a power station that is not working optimally. And we just build it now. That's ANC government for you. Spend 8 billion on something that is not working even now. Because we are defeated and we are confronted with a challenge, you go to your friends and say, guys, come help us. One of the biggest coal power stations is found in China. China has got latest uh, technology to make sure that they don't pollute a lot. So, you go and ask for help. You need more power stations. You go to China, you go to Russia, you go to India, you go to anywhere where there are progressive forces and not exploiters. And say to them, come and build a power station in South Africa. Your own power station. We don't want money from you, nothing. But you will own it for 30 years. After 30 years, you hand it over to us. They called it, build it, and operate it. And transfer. So, build it. Imagine if we had allowed the Chinese or any other one with capacity to build a power station under BOT in 1994. That power station was going to be handed over to us this year and we'll be owning it. Why should you have a problem of electricity in South Africa when there is so much solution, yet your exploiters are saying, close down your coal. Close down the coal, destroy coal power stations. After saying that, they place an order for coal. You, you don't use it, but bring it here, I'll use it. And then we allow such stupidity. They even give us money. They buy us to get into trouble. How do I destroy a coal power station of 1,000 megawatts if there is no alternative 1,000 megawatts? I will destroy, I want green energy. I will destroy these coal power stations. If you say I destroy this one of 1,000 megawatts, give me 1,000 megawatts of clean energy. I must destroy my power stations because I want wind energy. When do I know wind is coming? Because it can be so windy now. And before you know it, it's like there was never a wind yet. But coal, I know it's here. We have done our research. 
This mine of coal is going to take us so many years. It allows proper planning. So, introduction of the clean green energy should not be the destruction of our own base. We need to have our base so that we build from the base. How do you say there is a place in South Africa where you can travel for 100 kilometers on a gravel road? Government doesn't have money. But there are men and women here who have money. There is uh, Robert Gumete. There is uh, uh, Patrice Mutsipe. There should be many other Indians with money. You say to them, come and bid here to build a road on BOT. Build that road and put a toll gate. Not this thing they were putting here of uh, e-tolls. Uh-uh. And our people are going to pay for using that road because our people don't want free things. They want development and they will pay for it. You build it, you operate it, you transfer it back to us after you made your money and you made your profit. That road will never expire because it's a quality road. So why must we be worried? So When we say we want to own the land, we don't mean we are going to take these beautiful houses of Lanesia from you. Uh -uh. We mean the state is the custodian of the land. Let me tell you this. The state is the custodian of water. This water you drink, it is owned by the state. It gets provided to you by the state. But you never opened your tap one day and felt less ownership of that water. That's why you even call it my water. My water. But if we say show us the paper of ownership of this water, you don't have it. So why do you say no, if, if the state owns this thing, we're going to feel less. No. The land is ours. The property on top of the land, it's yours. We want to collect all of this land so that the unutilized land must be given to those who will use it. There are people who have 100 hectares. One individual, 100, is a very successful farmer on 10 hectares. It has been like that for many years. He has never expanded beyond 10 hectares. But he's got 100. So many of you have got ideas on how you can do farming. But the most expensive thing is the land. So we take the land. No one gets moved from where they are staying. No factory gets moved. Nothing. They are yours. Then we look at where the land is not being used will come to you as an owner. Okay, what is the plan here? No, 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 I'm fine here. What? Okay, let's take this one. Allocate it to others. Before you know it, there are five farmers. Each have got their own portion in, the, in a land that used to be owned by one. If many people flourish, we all flourish. But if it's one individual that gets to be celebrated for being rich in Lanesia and the rest of others are poor. There shouldn't be these informal settlements that we're talking about. We should have identified land and then allocated to our people in such a way that they settle like human beings and not sardines. There is no dignity There's no dignity in how our people are settled. In Alexandra, if you go to Alexandra, you'll be shocked. The situation is so bad. And there is a piece of land just next to Alexandra, owned by Vets University. 
What are the plans with that land? When Dalimpofu was at Vets, they were owning that empty land. He left. His son, Mbuisenin Luz, went. Vets was still owning that land. Did nothing on it. He left. Now, Mbuisenin's son, Ratana Malib, will go to Vets. The land is still owned by Vets. Nothing is being done on that land. Yet, next to it, People are staying like sardines. And don't talk about it because you are going to scare the investors. We must allow our people to stay in that situation, in squalor, because some investor is going to be offended. You know, had we given our people free education in 1994, we were not going to need free houses or social grants. Comrade Khan. 1994 should have been about free education. Rich or poor, every child must go to school and be educated. So, today, we talk about increasing social grants, rightfully so, because there are no jobs and there is poverty. But there is no Poverty in education. If you look at the pers- there are unemployed graduates. I'm not disputing that. But if you look at amongst the percentage amongst the graduates, it's very low of unemployment. Which is a scientific confirmation that education is a weapon against poverty. Now they don't give us education they give us RDP houses to keep us in poverty and illiterate because they love them uneducated. Educated people are going to challenge us. They will not vote for us. We want them suffering so that when they speak, we give them a t-shirt. When they speak, we give them food parcel. When they speak, we give them RDP. It looks like they speak a lot. We create jobs and call them Mapanya panya, what what? Fake jobs of panyaza. But our people have they been given house and free education, then they will be buying their beautiful houses now. That's why EFF insists on education. We want to make education fashionable. And that's why we say in the EFF, if you don't have metric, you can't go to parliament. We're not discriminating against anyone. We're simply saying, you need to go to school. Of course, we've got elders amongst us. We can't ask our elders for metric certificate. But if provincial secretary Moshe does not have metric, what was he doing all along? Because we got freedom in 1994. What, what were you doing? You can't say I was being prevented from going to school and, 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 and. In the EFF, education is what will get you to succeed. We're going to support small business in the EFF because small business is the one that creates jobs. So, how do you support small business? All the food that is eaten at Sun City. What is the name of Sun City? Prison. John Joburg Prison. All the food that is eaten there must be produced here by locals here. All the food that is eaten at schools called feeding scheme must be bought here. What is so special about a tomato from Limpopo? You want to eat tomato, you must wait for a truck to come from Limpopo to come and give your children tomato in a feeding scheme. We can grow it ourselves here, knowing very well that we've got a customer, and that customer is our school, it's our prison. We always say children must go to school for free, Uh, they are not paying school fees, 
as if school fees is what makes ed- uh, education. No. Education is made by those buildings, by books, by uniform. You give them the, all of that. You say, no, you are poor, Shem. No, 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 no. Don't pay school fees. You are poor. But when it comes to buying uniform, they are rich. You say to them, buy, buy. Buy uniform. How do you say I'm poor to pay a 200 rand school fees, but I'm rich to buy a 1,000 rand uniform? It can't be. There is some abnormality, some craziness that is going on. You give prisoners uniform for free, but you don't give school kids uniform for free. How do you do that? The people who are saying we don't want to be criminals, we want to go to school so that we become better people, they don't have uniform to go to school. But the day they commit crime, you are so prepared to give them uniform which you refused when they were outside prison. You want a free uniform? Come to prison. That's what they are saying. You want free food? Come to prison. When our people are going through hunger. So, we want you to know that we are a caring government that is going to support small business and make sure small business succeed and government does business with the local communities where those institutions are found. So, we must make sure that when we vote, we don't vote with emotions. Someone was saying, why does it look like all these lawyers support the EFF? And then The other lawyer responded and said, because lawyers can think and they know what makes sense. And what makes sense now is the EFF and no any other organization. (laughs) So be rest assured, this is your home, the EFF. It's a home of Indians. It's a home of colored. It's a home of whites. It's a home of Africans. Even white people are allowed. Here's a white man here. I don't think he's still white. Because he has rejected that privilege long time ago. When it was not fashionable amongst white people to reject such privilege. And joined our struggle. That's why Carl can join. And that's why EFF people can vote for Carl to be to be very top on the list of the EFF. And they say, why is Carl so top? Are you questioning democracy? But Carl's top was EFF trying to tell white people, we have no problems with white people. That's why we even vote for them to go to parliament to represent the EFF. You know, our people are being killed in Palestine. They want to wipe the whole nation off right in front of our eyes. They have occupied Palestine and we who know what is occupation should have an appreciation of what the Palestinians are going through. We know when they call an organization a terrorist organization, what do they mean? Because even this ANC was called a terrorist organization when it was fighting for its own people. Nelson Mandela was called a terrorist himself for fighting for his own people. The Palestinians are fighting for self-determination. They want their land back from the occupiers. And what the occupiers do In return, they kill. They kill Palestinians. So, we cannot fold our arms and pretend that we don't see what's happening in Palestine. 
If there is no peace in Palestine, there won't be peace the whole world amongst those who love peace. No any part, no any part of the world must be characterized by war. We just enjoyed it now as Muslims. I hope as you are eating, you are dedicating also to those children and women who are being butchered. They didn't have eat. Instead of having eat, they were fed missiles, guns. Once they try to come together to pray, they are a threat to a certain group and it kills all of them. Even kills UN staff members. Even bomb a hospital. Bomb a refugee camp. Let me tell you, even if the general of Hamas is in that hospital, once he runs into that hospital, it's done. We can't do anything anymore. You can't bomb a hospital because you say there is Hamas in a hospital. You have to find other ways to get to Hamas without bombing a hospital or a refugee camp. It's not called a refugee camp for nothing. That's why we took them to ICJ. That's why we support that decision. Because once you start bombing UN staff members, bombing uh, refugee camps, you are violating international law. You are committing genocide. That is in violation of international law. You kill journalists. We don't love some of them here in South Africa, but we can't kill them. Journalists, whether you like or you don't like, you can't kill them. If anything, you must protect their freedom to report freely without any form of of intimidation. So, why would a Muslim, a true Muslim, vote for DA that supports apartheid Israel, which is committing genocide? When you vote for DA, you are allowing what is happening in Palestine to happen. Because we in the EFF marched to, Palestine, to Israel embassy and told them to leave because we can't share a territory with murderers. We only want to share land with peaceful people. We did not, we did not, we did not end it there. We proceeded to take it into parliament and we took a resolution in parliament that South Africa must cut ties and remove the Israeli embassy. The, the ANC that pretends to care about Muslims is the one that must implement that decision. They are not implementing it. The support of the ANC for struggle of Palestine is pretentious. It's not genuine. I saw Ramaphosa on Eid going kneeling there going, look at this one. <laughs> He's pretending like he cares about our people. You care about the Muslims of South Africa. It means you must care for the Palestinians. Brazil, Brazil removed the Israeli embassy. Brazil. There is another Arab state recently, I don't know if it's UAE or what, they too cut the diplomatic relations. It's, 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 yes. So what we're saying is international solidarity is important. We benefited from international solidarity. There were big matches, big boycotts in London, in USA, in Washington for the release of Nelson Mandela, they don't know. We were born, Mandela was already in prison. We came to join the struggle for his release without knowing his face. 
That's what the international community did. That we don't care whether we know his face or not. But he's violated because he's standing for the rights of his people. A Muslim that votes for a patriotic alliance that took a platform and said, kill Hamas. You vote for ACDP that said, we cannot cut relations with Israel. So, Lanesha has got a very good history of progressive uh, struggles here. It cannot be that there is a single vote of the DA coming from this Ward 9. We don't want them here. We don't want them here. Why? They are allowing the killing of our brothers and sisters and our children. Who support killing of children? Who, who, who identifies kids as a threat? Even the ANC cannot be voted for because the ANC should have shown seriousness by removing that embassy. They have not done so. All they do, they go to ICJ, International Court of Justice. They are there talking. Uh, it's easy to do that one because, you know, the court issues take forever. They are buying themselves time. The immediate thing now, immediate thing now, is to remove the Israeli embassy. That's when we know we are practically in solidarity with the uh, people of Palestine. McDonald, you are talking about, received a letter from EFF and said, do you have any product there that comes from uh, Israel? They said, no. Uh, we buy our food here. They gave us the list. They said, mm, we believe you. No problem. We went to Woolworths. We said, we know you are selling Israeli food. Only the EFF did that. No any other party did that. Said to Woolworths, do you have Israel food your products? They said, no, we are left with what word? They said the name. Uh, uh, some 10%, give us two weeks, we'll, remove, we'll, we'll sell all of it and then we'll not order again. We said, there's no two weeks because people are dying now. <laughs> By supporting any product from Israel, you are supporting the genocide against our people. We said to our student command everywhere, no lecture or visiting lecture or any teaching material should enter our universities or enter our Tibet colleges if they are coming from Israel. We are not saying Jewish kids can't learn in our universities, no. But we are refusing the products that comes from that government which kills people. So, we're making a plea today that Lanesia Ward 9 is a no-go area for those who support genocide. And we are not going to block them physically. We are going to block them through our vote. Vote for the EFF and have the load shedding stop immediately. Vote for the EFF and have the jobs for our people. Vote for the EFF, have everyone have a piece of land. Vote for the EFF, see the removal of Israeli embassy in June, immediately in June. That, if you vote for the EFF, that is going to be in the acceptance speech of the president, that it, with immediate effect, we want the Israeli embassy closed. <laughs> My Indian community, I know you are poor like all of us, but you have a little bit. I ask you to donate to the EFF. 
Not only in money terms. Goods, food. These volunteers of the EFF are not working. They don't get paid by anyone. All you can do is to give us that support so that we can claim back this Lanesia and take out the criminals. That's the first challenge I give to you, to donate to the EFF and make it successful. The second challenge is to challenge all the females who are Muslims to donate sanitary towels to poor females every month. That if you care, we're not asking a lot. Just identify one or two and say, this ones I'm going to buy them sanitary pads every month. Why? Because those girl children who come from poor families, when they experience nature, they don't even go to school because they are ashamed. You give them sanitary pads, you restore their dignity and their confidence. You are well-known business people. The good thing is that we can learn a lot from you. You're working hard, you've got successful businesses, you make our economy to be what it is because of your hard work. We want to learn from you. We want you to teach us. You can't teach us by just talking. As an Indian family, each one of us must adopt one African child who is going to be under our family mentorship and say, you come here. We want to teach you how business works. We can produce through you. Because you are doing that with your children. Your children just become successful. It's a generation after generation. Go and break a generation after generation of poverty. Because ours is poverty. It's passed from one generation to the next generation. One generation, we inherit poverty. But you are coming into our lives and say, we want to teach you. You could have broken a generational curse in that family. So we, 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 we are making a plea that all successful business people, especially Indians here in Lanesia who have successful businesses, please adopt certain families and teach them. Let us not be a group of complainants. Sometimes we need to take action. And once you liberate as many families as possible, some of these things we are complaining about of crime and all of that, they get reduced because people have got something to do. All I'm asking is, give us something to do. Let's work together as a community. And the only thing that can unite us is for us coming together. Once we work together, there's nothing that can divide us. That's why they keep us divided because they are threatened by our unity. Our unity is going to produce something that has never been done in this country. Today, we take our children to multiracial schools and white schools. So one day, my son says to me, hey, chief, I hear that you are going to drive away white people when you take over government. Hear me? He says, yeah, everybody speaks, is speaking about that. Okay, do you have a problem with that? Okay, does it mean my friend who's white, so and so, is also going to be driven away? He has now come to know white people, he interacts with them, he realizes these are human beings. There's nothing wrong. He takes it upon himself to defend them. Because he's got a working relationship with them. That's what we need to do. We need to have a working relationship in order to defend each other. 
And mentorship, I don't mean donations. Mentorship, I don't mean food parcels. You know mentorship better than me. Because we shouldn't live here and say, no, we can't adopt any family because we're already giving them food. That is just for that time. You give them a skill, it's forever. You will not have to give them food parcels. So, I make a plea, Mubarak, let's work hard. Here in Ward 9, I'm impressed with the work that you guys are doing in this Ward. And let's continue to work very hard. It's not going to be easy. Uh, For the EFF, this is a virgin area. So we're breaking new ground. And we're going all out. We're going all out to talk to our people so that even when you reject us, don't reject us on the basis of the headlines. Reject us on the basis of the message we gave you. You heard from us. No newspaper can speak for the EFF. We, we can speak for ourselves, and that's what we are doing. And we are going to meet all types of communities. We are going to Eldos. We are going to, on Wednesday, we are going to be meeting even the white communities because people come and lie about us. And it's high time we speak for ourselves. That you think we are going to take your business We are not going to take your business. We are going to double it. You are going to be more successful under the EFF. Thank you very much.